Great, so now past the basic things, the vocabulary and the history, let's look at real problems where, where basically uh, graphs can be very useful to model, to solve problems. So let's look at this problem together. You guys read this. So what do we have here? Find the shortest tour with which traverses all nodes of a graph G only once. So this is slightly different from the Euler problem because Euler basically he focused on edges. He wanted to cross the edge only once. In this case, we want to, you know, start from a point, go over all the nodes in the graph, and come back to that node. So I would like you to think about a possible solution. So I'm going to give you two minutes. I would like you to draw a graph. Like for example, let's say we have a graph like this and you want to start from here, V1, and find the shortest path. How are you going to uh, do this? Any ideas? There are many ideas. So I would like you to think about where, how to go around these uh, nodes in the graph so that you have the shortest distance crossed, let's say, I just do this type, you know, like just randomly. Okay, now it's not good. And then I go back to here. Or I can have another solution. I don't know. Maybe something like this. So there are many, many possible solutions. And I cannot go over this again because I traversed it. So I should traverse it only once, right? So I should go this way. So... Think about it, okay? I'll give you guys two minutes to think about this problem. Try to draw a small graph and try to find uh, like an idea, basically. Yeah, we want to find the shortest path. Starting from a point, okay? And we want to start from, let's say, from location V1 cross all the cities only once and come back to V1. So you want to go like to have a tour around the city, for example. Or in terms of uh, energy flow, you want to optimize your resources. So you want to have like, this can be used in, in many, many, many fields, okay? This can be, by the way, an exam question. These are the kind of, I give you new problems in the exams, not things that we solved before. Don't Google it. Mm -hmm. This one is simple, but when you think about a solution, your solution, if it's correct, algorithmically, it should work on any kind of graph, if, if, it's, if your algorithm is correct. Very good. So you, 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 you got one possible solution, which is basically trying all possible permutations right so you're trying you know you're looking if you have a graph like this you're trying to reorder all your points v3 v5 i don't know v8 etc 
in such a way, you know, you're enumerating all possible combinations and selecting the one that gives you the shortest path. But um, in that case, how many would you have? It's crazy. See, if you have n nodes, you will have it in the order of n factorial. So all possible combinations. So even if you, in your lifetime, if you have more than 20 nodes, you will not have the solution if you let a computer computing that for you. So that solution that you suggested right now, which is trying to find, you know, computing all possible permutations and the shortest di distance for all possible orderings of your, of your nodes, right, which one to traverse first, second, third, that is a good solution, but it's not practical. Okay, now we want to find a more intuitive heuristic, like, you know, something in between that can solve the problem. It might not work on all cases, might not give you uh, the very, very best solution for all types of graphs, but maybe it can give you a good solution for this graph. Maybe the, it will work on this one. Okay, let me give you an idea. So, since we try to find the shortest path, what we're looking at, what we're looking for is basically, um, you know, we're trying to, we can look at the closest neighbor we have. So closest neighbor, it means that I'm going to find the closest neighbor to me and walk to that neighbor. And then from there, I will try also to find the closest neighbor. And in that way, I'm, you know, trying to make my distance shorter because I'm looking for those who are close to me, okay? Not those who are far away. So I'm not going to cross a big distance, right? I'm going to cross a small distance. I'm not going to just jump over there, right? So I'm going to cross the small distance. So if I do this, let's say I will uh, visit, uh, we'll visit, for example, uh, visit the nearest and I will add unvisited node. So this is the principle basically that we will be following. Okay, so let's start for example from this node right here. The nearest node that we go this way, okay, uh, we have two different choices and then I'm gonna f look at the distance between this node and all other nodes, right, and Actually, the closest one, you can see it's just this one, right? So in this case, for this uh, graph that is quite circular, I can easily find my shortest distance using uh, while visiting the nearest unvisited node, which means once I have visited a node, I have marked it as visited. I cannot revisit again, so I need to look for the nearest node amongst those that are left out, okay? Great, so this solution works for this graph. Now let's look at this scenario. So I have another graph right here, and I'm going to apply the same solution, okay? Try to find the shortest path so you guys can see. My graph is centered at zero. These are the different distances, and I'm gonna walk to the nearest unvisited neighbor. So I'll start with this one. Uh, maybe I'll choose another color, let's see. And then the nearest one would be either three or five. So I'll go, let's say like this. And from three, I have two options, either eight or this one, okay, or this node. So the closest one, of course, is eight. And then from eight, I will visit the uh, remaining unvisited node, which is this guy. And then, of course, I need to go back to my source node. Now you can see that using this basically, uh, we have made our, the path is actually too long. We can find a more, uh, a better solution. Can you guys think of another solution? Instead of using the nearest neighbor, we can, we can find another principle for this type of graph. So basically, what is the principle? What is the rule that you are using? So if you're going to write this algorithmically, what is, yes? Uh, let's find the uh, forest uh, neighbor and uh, try to go to the shortest path. Yeah, so the problem is like we don't know the shortest path. We're looking for it, right? No. Huh. First, uh, we find the uh, forest, you know? 
Huh, the furthest one. The one that's far yeah, the one that's far away, like this one. Yes. Okay. And uh, we would go from zero to that one from the shortest path. From the shortest path, yes. But the problem is to go from here to there from the shortest path, how do you know the shortest path? This is the key question. You need to define a rule. Because here you will say if you uh, describe if it. All, all of them is convicted. Yes. So yeah, now you're jumping over to like the optimal solution. Um, one of not the optimal, one of the good solutions. But if you think about it in very simple terms, uh, so you said you're gonna visit, try to go to the furthest node. But first, you need to know what is the furthest node, right? So let's say you hypothetically know by computing pairwise distances between all of your nodes. And your idea is that, okay, we can look at the furthest node uh, from the source and then somehow try to find the shortest path. So not sure this works or not, then how can you do the find the shortest path? Because here, for example, will you look at the closest neighbor towards that direction? Because you need to explore the local neighborhood, right? So there, there's a bit of, um, you know what I mean? So you don't know which nodes are exactly um, connected to, eat, to which nodes. But it's a good starting point, but it needs more um, cultivation. Okay, good. Any other ideas? You can order the edges. You can order the edges. Very good. We can order the edges. So the distances between two nodes. So that's actually uh, one possible solution to this one. So um, we can find what we call here, um, you said ordering the edges, but uh, it's based on finding the uh, closest pairs. So that's exactly the same. So here, uh, let's say you find, you connect the closest pairs of nodes by uh, a path or an edge, and then you do that, okay? So for all nodes without creating a cycle. So here, if we don't create, so a cycle, it means like you have three nodes, for example, connected. So this is a cycle. Is that two columns? I am not sure. So now we're just exploring heuristics. Let's keep it too simple, guys. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this, so going right side, most right side. Okay. And then going left, so uh, we may not complement. So going right side like this. Yes. Then going left, one by one, not, not two, but two, three. Two, three. Uh, then what do we do? Where do you go next? Next is three. Three, but you cannot visit the same node again. Yeah. Ha, ah, you're skipping. Yeah. Okay, got it. So you're you want to skip. So you're going this way. Yes. And then, then three. three. Then minus one. Then oh, okay, let me do it. Okay, so you're gonna three minus one. And then five. Then zero. Okay, yeah, so that's uh that's good. That seems to work here because you're like uh like going one and then back all the way back, but you have two stops. You have two additional stops here. So there is actually a more optimal solution, like a better solution. But this is a good starting point. See, this is how we guys find solutions. Just, you know, by continue, by thinking over the problem, trying different scenarios. And this is how you get uh, to solutions. So here, basically, you connect the two closest nodes. So the two closest nodes is this one. And then the two closest next ones, without creating a cycle, is 0, 3. And then we can do 3, 8, or uh, negative 1, negative 5. So connecting the closest pairs. And then at the very end, you can connect it this way. And you can start wherever you want. So basically, this is your graph. So it's like one go without, without the extra stops at nodes. So you have like just uh, one, uh, one path. So this is one another algorithm. Now, 
as you as you mentioned, uh, there this is a very difficult problem. So if we want to really have the exact shortest path for any graph, so we want to have a shortest path for any graph, then this is an MP hard problem. It's non-deterministic polynomial. It has a non-deterministic polynomial time. It's one of those uh, problems where uh, actually uh, there is like what we call the MP hard complete class uh, of uh, problems. If you find one solution to one of them, it solves the other ones. So these remain unsolved up to this point. So there is no actual algorithm that can solve this problem for all types of graphs. There are good heuristics that there are reliable solutions, different solutions, but these solutions are not, do not work on all cases, okay? And also we want the solution not to be only good, but also to be optimal in terms of time. Now, let's, why I started with this, why I talked about, you know, like here, a real world problem we want to solve, it turns out that actually bees, they can solve this problem. And this I found very, very fascinating. So there was an article uh, here published uh, in Nature Scientific Reports in 2017. And basically, bees, they can easily solve it. If you think it's hard, I can solve it. How did they find this? So they found that basically the flight of bumblebees, this is a bumblebee, okay? So the flight of bumblebees becomes more efficient over time. They learn how to solve the challenge to find a route that visits each destination or node while traveling the shortest distance. And this is how it looks like. So this is, they track the bee uh, trajectory over days and they found out that after a few days, the bee starts to pick up and I find basically after some, you know, exploration, it identifies the shortest path very uh, um, accurately. So now, there is a lot of evidence towards this, and uh, it's actually uh, very, uh, I find it very amazing that these tiny uh, brain bees solve a complex mathematical problem. So they say bumblebees can find the solution to a complex mathematical problem which keeps computers busy for days. And scientists in the UK have discovered that bees learn to fly the shortest possible route between flowers, even if they discover the flowers in a different order. So bees are effectively solving the traveling salesman problem. And this is what the problem is called, the traveling salesman problem. So it, like a salesman wants to sell his goods to people in the city, but he wants to optimize his route. So he wants to pass by each city only once and present his uh, goods, basically. And these are the first animals found to do this. And there is a lot. So uh, uh, foraging bees solve traveling salesman problems every day. Uh, they visit flowers at multiple locations. Because bees use lots of energy to fly, they find a route which keeps flying to a minimum. So this is to basically keep their energy when they are looking for food. So great. So now you guys know that bees can solve complex graph-based problems. Brains also, they are uh, very uh, mesmerizing. So we're, we do a lot of complex computations. There's a lot, whole lot in neuroscience that we still do not know about the brain in general, uh, especially particularly for our species. And here, what I would like to um, explain that we use graph theory to also understand your brain, your brain map, to map your brain to uh, see how your uh, connectivity changes over time when you are, for example, feeling well or when you're like feeling uh, unhappy or like with your mental states basically or when uh, the brain uh, connectivity, okay, your brain craft, does it, how does it change when you're learning, after learning, before reading a book, after reading a book. So there is a whole lot of uh, work on uh, brain connectivity or brain graphs uh, that is based or rooted in representing the brain as a graph. How does that happen? So I'll just explain very briefly here. So the basic idea is to parcelate uh, the brain, to divide the brain up into a uh, different anatomical region. So this is region one, for example, okay? This is, uh, I'm just doing it very randomly. Okay, region two, uh, this is region three, okay? And in all of those regions, I will have like, uh, the brain will get scanned. So you'll have a signal. For example, if you use functional 
uh, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, you can record the brain activity in each tiny voxel uh, in the brain, in each location of your brain. So you have like this activity, and this activity actually, uh, it's, it reflects what we call uh, how much oxygen your brain is taking up. Because you mo the more you're using a part of your brain, the more oxygen it needs, the more, because the neurons are firing, okay? So this is what we call a blood oxygenation oxygenation uh, depend, uh, level dependent uh, signal, okay? So now, once you have those signals, imagine uh, these, this is the average signal for this region, this whole region, then what we need to do, it's quite simple, so we build a graph, so let me just maybe put it as a graph because I haven't introduced this, so this is a graph, here I have three regions, R1, R2, and R3, and the connectivity between two regions, it actually, we define it as the similarity or the correlation between these two signals. So for example, R2 and R3 are very correlated, which means they fire together, they're activated together, so there is maybe a correlation of 0 0.9 between them, while region 1 and region 3, they have maybe a very... Uh, a very small correlation maybe of the order of 0 0.1 and here for these two there is almost no uh, like no correlations like it's I mean like it's positive but it's so small okay now this is very important because this is it has been proved in many neuroscientific studies that this graph is actually when we measure it using fMRI is your fingerprint it acts as a fingerprint we can find you amongst millions of brain graphs if we get to measure your brain graph. So there is a whole lot uh, on doing it. So you guys can see that um, graphs can be used everywhere. So here is an example from the book. So for example, we can use, uh, we have two different nodes here. Uh, we have a set of nodes. The green ones are healthy connections. You can see these are healthy connections. And you have two nodes which were affected by a, a disorder or a neurological disease. So we want to study this. We want to analyze the graphs and see how this, for example, this connection gets affected in different subjects or how it gets propagated to other nodes over time. So there is a lot of analysis that we can do. And uh, here, one thing that is done is comparing a set of graphs. And this is something we also will learn to do. Like if you have like millions of graphs, group A and group B, two different groups, how are you going to compare them? How can you find the, the representative can, like uh, graph of each population of graphs. So this is also a problem to solve, how to create an average of graphs. So there are different things. Now, let's look at this. What are we going to cover in this course briefly? So we're going to cover many things, as I mentioned earlier, but everything is like, basically, I would recommend you guys to have a look at this book. It's one of the best books on graph theory and analysis. And what I love most about this book, what is unique about this textbook, is they always use the word intuition, which is rarely present in textbooks. So they say the intuition uh, of using this or that or moving from this solution to the other solution is this. So they clarify intuitions. And uh, starting, so what we're going to cover following the different chapters, we'll look at today, connectivity matrices, node degrees and strength. So we're going to have a look at the concept of a node degree in a graph. Centrality and hubs, which are very important uh, nodes in a graph. Components, cores, and clubs of a graph. Uh, actually, this is repeated. Okay, seven, paths, diffusion, and navigation on a graph. We'll look at also motif, small world, graph property, network economy, and we're going to cover all the baseline, basic uh, classical graph theory algorithms through these chapters.